All right, you're still watching Ways Now. International Peace Day is celebrated annually on the um, 21st of September. It is a day to promote peace and non-violence around the world. The theme for International Peace Day 2023 is Action for Peace. Our ambition... Um, our ambition for the hashtag global goals. Now, this theme recognizes the interconnectedness of peace and sustainable development. It also calls on anyone to take action to build a more peaceful world. Okay, so, I mean, today is a very interesting day. A lot of people are doing so many peace walks and all of that. So it's, it's just an apt season. Yeah. It's very sad, honestly. It's very sad. I think maybe what is saddening me is the fact that um, I just watched the video of the, the dead body that was being exhumed and, you know, seen fresh. fresh She's. I think that's what is. Uh, now I can I trace have, I it. I haven't even seen the video. But so I I literally, right, I've been seeing the video all day, but I just scroll past it because I actually, uh, most of my day I've, I've been reading, I've been studying. So a few times that I went on social media just to check what's happening so that we could discuss, you know, our topic for the day. I saw something around, oh, body has been exhumed. I never clicked on it. It was when I was having my makeup done, I clicked on it and I saw um, fresh blood. Like, literally, yeah, this is... Like, is there anything in this life it. that would make me, like, resolve to say maybe the ultimate prize death? Like, there's... Everything can be peacefully resolved as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, you know how bad could it be that you why was why was he rushed why did they rush to bury him <sighs> you know, sad. It's, it's it's a long story to very very sad to to talk about but i think he's just a downer for me <laughs> what but did I, you but find? I'm, I'm happy about how people are speaking up um i passed through the ozumba while they were doing the protest and i was happy to see that I don't think um, the generation before this will even, you know, have the courage to say anything or even challenge. I mean, the Malian music as a whole, I think they're pretty much very big. And, you know, to be able to challenge them, to be able to say um, you want to cancel their music, that means there's a force, you know. We're gradually waking up that, yes, our voice matters. It will be hard, you know, and it will take time, but we're going to keep pushing. And so... Peacefully. Peaceful for that. Push. Yes, peacefully. Absolutely. Peacefully. So what did you find for us in the um, news? It was a single bad story. Singer David O um, made an appearance at the protest, which is very much interesting. I like that the artists are also coming out to support. So it's not just the youths or the listeners of the music. Mm. I mean, if the big shots in the industry are showing support, then definitely I hope and I believe that we will get justice, or at least you know, some people will be properly apprehended. Yeah, speaking about that, um, there are so many developing stories. But my, let me quickly take my story first. And the reason I'm taking it is also tied to, since we're discussing issues around healthcare sector. So was, I have like two stories to take. First of all is the fact that four people escaped death in Lekki Aja Expressway on an auto crash, right? Um, the incident happened around the Salau Junction area of the Lekki Aja Expressway. The reason I'm, I'm talking about this particular um, in, um, news is the fact that literally Lekki Expressway is a death trap, right? Um, it's actually inhumane um, what our leaders are doing to us. Uti went to Benin and she said that at some point the car had to stop. They had to come down and enter Okada. She was going for a wedding. That they had to stop because they, the, the road was just not motorable. And this bad road, she was, she was even trying to say, uh, we thought we had bad roads in Lagos, then go to other parts of the world. I mean, parts of the, the country. So the reason I'm raising this is, I mean, I don't know about other parts, but I've been to Kaduna, I've been to Abuja. Rarely would you see really, really bad roads, right? I don't understand. Yeah, there might be those areas where you would have bad roads. Maybe I've not plied those yeah, routes. Yeah, where these major access roads should. I'm saying that, you know, generally, I don't think, I, I, I feel like our leaders just want to keep us busy with things that we're not supposed to be busy with, right? I'm doing a course with Harvard, and they were talking about how, um, they were talking about how they put a cost, right, 
to incidences that happened. Mm -hmm. So they put like they 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 pinned it down to how much naira and cobble mm -hmm. was lost in those incidences that happened around the healthcare sector. Mm -hmm. Just imagine for a second if we're able to put data right to some of these things that we go through. Now I've had to be passing an alternate route every single day because once I come out of my house, right, I see like the map telling me that I have a fifty something minutes. Um, what's it called? And you know when Google gives you 50-something minutes, you know expect a three-hour, yeah. do you understand? Expect a three-hour delay. Mm. So it is really, really bad. Like, literally, I don't know what else we can do to these our leaders. Like, do you literally derive joy in watching people either die on the roads or get stuck and are frustrated? It's, it's just too much. It's like they just want to keep us busy with terrible governance. I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, what will it cost for us to have roads that are pothole free what would it cost so i i want to take a quick story that is tied to the conversation that we're having today which is the fact that the medical um it says the medical postgraduate school of met um the postgraduate medical college right they've decried um what's it called <laughs> they lament low enrollment of postgraduate medical students to train owning to the to the continued emigration of doctors right the reason i'm taking this story again is tied to what we're having um today and from the reports the speaking on wednesday at the institution ijaniki lagos during the pre-convocation press briefing ahead of convocation of over 500 uh, postgraduate doctors um that's today Oshibogo said that efforts must be made to stem the tides of Jakpa amongst medical doctors. He said that we will be co uh, convocating about 413 new fellows and 92 doctors of medicine. We will have over 500 postgraduate doctor conferences on Thursday. And the main challenge we face now is that we do not have enough people to train because as doctors graduate, the syndrome, the Jakpa syndrome, um, what is generally referred to as brain drain in the country is affecting them. To address that problem, we need to train more and retain more. There are two legs to it. We need to ramp up our training processes, and we also need to put into in place, uh, mainly on the side of government, the mechanism to ensure that skilled manpower remains in the country. There are several ways in which the government can do that. At our last conference, we preferred some, some solutions as to how we can re retain trained manpower through financial and non-financial incentives. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this story because of the conversation we're having around the healthcare sector. Yeah. So it's not just enough for us to complain, right? There, there has to be a structure, and we have to see the willpower of our government to say, yes, we truly want to solve this problem. We'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, right, we'll be discussing the issues around the healthcare sector, and let's see how we can prefer solutions to them. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 